Hello world! I'm Brandon, I am a freshman at Yale, I'm in Moose College, and I'm a prospective CS and math major. Uh, hello, I'm Sebastian, uh, I'm in Stiles College, and I'm a prospective CS and linguistics major. Awesome, well it's nice to meet both of you today. Can you tell me a little bit more about your project? Sure, so we have an economic data visualizer here, um, which we take, so we take Fed Reserve data, and we try and make it so that it's accessible to uh, users. So as you can see, you can go explore, and there are a bunch of options to choose from. Let's say we started with something easy, like the number of American commuters who ca carpool to work. So if you show the graph, here you can see that since COVID actually, we have a sharp drop, and that's something you might not be able to see just from the data load. Uh, let's try another query, just to show the number of interesting things you could see. For example, if we were to try a number of Americans without health insurance, and we were to show the graph for that, uh, here's something pretty interesting, which is that since uh, Trump's presidency, uh, we have this reversal in the trend. But then another thing we might also notice is that, again, during COVID, the number of Americans without health insurance has also dropped. Um, now, we didn't expect to see this either, um, but if you look at the source code, this is, this is what we would have originally seen, which looks pretty unintuitive. And if you were to make this yourself, this is what you would have gotten. So pretty unreadable without our data Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely couldn't understand that raw text right there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so tell me a little bit more about what inspired you guys to make this project. I mean, like what, what made you decide, you know, hey, I want to go to the government's website, take some databases, um, and make it easy for people to visualize that data? Yeah, so yeah. basically, it was actually Brandon's idea to do this, um, to do an economic data visualizer. And then I was just poking around on the Census Bureau website, and then I found all these tables from the American Community Survey, but th these are pretty inaccessible. There's no API to access these. And then to look at this data, let's say to see like Americans unemployed and whatever, you have to manually like click this and then also go down year by year and change it. So then we simplified that process by downloading the CSVs. And then the CSVs files were like this, which is pretty crazy. So then we had a couple of dictionaries to sort through it and then just make it easier. So that way you can actually see these like trends and analyze it much more easily than if you were just looking at numbers on a screen. Gotcha. No, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I can imagine having to parse through all of this data might be a little bit difficult, right? So can you tell me about like an issue or a bug that you had to overcome while working on this project? Yeah, I mean, just from this, there were a lot of different files that we had to go. And then also, uh, we originally started on Windows, and then we switched to Mac. And something with that was, uh, was unexpected was Windows automatically sorts through files chronologically, but Mac does not. So then we had to find that um, troubleshooting, because when we had our first um, output graph produced on Mac, for some reason, all the lines were crisscrossing. We were right, like, what's right. going on? <laughs> um, and then we finally fixed that by sorting. It was just one line, but um, yeah. Gotcha. No, that, that makes a lot of sense, too. So I guess on the flip side of things, then, uh, what part of your project are you most proud of? You want to speak on this one? I think just how you know, customizable it is for us. So, so if we were in the future to try and develop this further, one of the things that we actually noticed was that we could just select through. So for example, here you see this tree. And so actually for any coder uh, on our website, uh, what we're pretty satisfied with is that actually you can just change a few keywords and you get a whole nother, uh, a whole nother set of combination of queries you can choose from uh, and all the data that comes with it. So that was something that we were pretty happy with. Yeah, and then we also uh, added some extra code um, that took out all the unique words from these like set of queries in this tree. So in the future, with a potential expansion, we could have some natural language processing. So any person could input with a couple of words. Then we could take out those que uh, keywords, make that into a query, and then pull a data. Gotcha. I mean, that'd be a really cool feature for sure. Yeah. I guess uh, as a follow-up, I remember you guys were talking about seeing the trend in healthcare and health insurance over time. It was pretty interesting to you. I was just curious to see if, while working on this project, did you encounter any other types of data or trends that were particularly surprising to either one of you? Yeah, Brandon, you want to speak on this? Well, I think so. If you look at looked at things like how, mean how American household income, what's interesting here is that contrary to most other trends. So, for example, in employment, if I were to show you an employment graph, you might see a drop uh, due to COVID. But then, for in in terms of household income, for some reason the the data doesn't show that here. So that's something pretty interesting, which uh, we might not have been able to intuitively find without our visualizers. So. That might be an area that we might like, like to look into and do more uh, analysis and data analysis in the future. Gotcha. I mean, this is a very useful project that I can imagine a lot of data scientists and other people might want to use to visualize this data, right? So do you, do you have any next steps or future plans for this project? 
I think if we were to take this project in a certain direction, for me, it would be to focus on uh, trying to combine the data sets so that we could look at how much they're diverging by. And so if, say for example, your trend is diverging in a certain direction so that you know, there's a deviance between one trend and another, then we can look into that and say, okay, this is interesting. What drives these two relations apart when they were previously so correlated with each other? So that's probably an in interesting area that we'd like to take it in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing me your project. I mean, this is a great job. Well done. So yeah. thank you so much again. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. And this is CS50.